here from CustomDollBaby.com. Welcome back to another episode of Reborn With Me. Today we are talking about blushing. And before I dig into that, I just want to quickly do a review of what we've done so far. So we started with base coat to give us an even canvas to paint on. We cured that layer and then began mottling in several layers of mottling, adding blues and purples and reds to create the appearance of blood flowing under the skin. From there, we went on to paint veins in the hands and feet and also in parts of the temple and the head to further create the appearance of blood flowing under the skin. And then we added another blue shading layer on top of that for additional realism. Once we were done with all the under the skin work, we started adding skin through some Flesh 08 layers. And we did two, I think, layers of Flesh 08 because that created the distance that we wanted between the veining and the mottling and the top of the skin. We're sort of creating that even complexion. So now that the skin is on, we're ready to start blushing. I like to do my blushing in a minimum of three layers. The first is an overall blush wash to warm the skin. The second is what I consider the accent blushing. So these are the areas that you typically think of blushing on the doll, the cheeks, the knees, the elbows, things like that. And then a final layer I like to do is just what I call a sweet spot. So maybe there's a spot on the knee or on the toes where you want it to be really bright, really rosy. That's the third layer that I'm going to do. So today we're going to do our blush wash and before we do that I'm going to use the magic of Photoshop to help you visualize what I mean when I'm talking about those three blush layers. So right now we're looking at a photo of the limb that we've been painting on my tablet. So the general blush wash is a very <clears throat> excuse me it's a little wet outside I'm getting super congested is a very light wash of color and we're gonna put it all over the doll all over every limb now to think about whether or not you want to do this you have to consider the complexion of your doll so if your doll is a very rosy colored baby maybe like a creamy you're looking for that newborn fresh out of the womb look then maybe you would want to do a pretty dark general blush wash if your baby's pretty fair skinned, you know, maybe you make that a very diluted layer, or maybe you don't do it at all. Fortunately, I'm working from a photo, so I don't have to make executive decisions like that. I can just make sure I'm matching the baby that I'm working on and go from there. So the first blush wash is a diluted layer. We put it all over the doll. The second layer is the accent blushing. So this is where we start to blush key spots, like the knee, top of the feet, the top of the thigh. Of course, when you're working with paint, it's gonna be um, blended a lot better than this. You know, the Photoshop makes it very bright so you can see exactly where I'm putting it. When I'm painting, sometimes it's hard to see what I'm doing. So sometimes you might wanna leave it there, but I also like to go back and on certain, what I call sweet spots, I'll make it even brighter. So maybe on the toes, as well as on the knee. So you can see, especially when you're looking at this kneecap view, that the layers, you know, it's almost like a topographical map. So the higher we get on the knee, the more red it becomes. And when those all blend it together, it looks very nice. Um, on the, you know, on the Photoshop, it looks like a dartboard or something. But again, this is just to give you an idea or an illustration of where we're going to put the blush later layers. So with that, let's start painting. Before we begin the blush, let's talk a little bit about which color to use. It's probably a good idea to use the same color for all three layers. So in your starter kit, you got two colors of blush, the warm blush and the lip and nail blush. The warm blush um, by the tutorial is suggested for the sort of generalized blushing layer that I described. 
Now I'm just putting it on the palette so you can see it. Um, my problem with the warm blush is it actually has quite a lot of orange in it. Um, it's a little more orangey, more brown than I prefer to use. So I actually don't really use this anymore um, for blushing. But if you have a lot of it and you want to make good use of it, you can always put a little bit of blue on it to give it more of that. I like that blood red purpley red kind of color and less this sort of orangey clay red kind of color. Now the Lip and Nail Blush does have a little bit of that purpley tone in it. Now if you can see that, but at least compared to the uh, the warm blush I think you might be able to tell that this is more, more purple, more red. It's a little bit darker. Um, I've never tried to use this as a generalized blush layer, but I do like to use it for my lips and nails. So it's one of the few things that I use as intended um, from the starter kit. What I prefer to use is actually a custom blend um, because I want that bloody purple-ish kind of color. My custom blend includes pyrrole red, ultramarine blue, and a little bit of burnt umber um, to give it that kind of bloody brown color. So I have some that I've already mixed in a jar for convenience, so I don't have to keep making it as I go. As you can see, this color is quite distinct from the other two. It's got really more of a blood, purple, maybe even fuchsia kind of color to it. So this is the first wash that we're gonna do. Like our mottling layers, we want translucent color. If you're trying to get the baby really red, you might do it a little more concentrated. Um, I'm a kind of risk averse painter, so I don't want to put anything on the doll that might be too dark. I'd rather just keep adding layers instead of having to subtract a layer. Um, so I go pretty light on the colors, which is why I needed to do the Photoshop to illustrate what I'm doing, because sometimes it's really hard to see in the camera. So I'm actually pretty content with the color that we've got here. I'm gonna add some to the more porous brush. And it's really up to you whether you wanna go back and blot the color off once you've applied it or if you just wanna leave it there. Again, it's a function of how dark you want your baby to be. I'm just gonna blot it. I really need to change out these paper towels so you can see the color that is gonna be on the doll. Make sure I don't have any dust or glitter or anything on it. I don't know why, but there's just like a lot of glitter in the atmosphere in my workshop and it gets on the dolls. So I'm forever brushing glitter off of things. Okay, and I'm just gonna add that warm blush layer, or not a warm blush, this generalized blush layer. As you can see, I'm putting it everywhere. And you can see how it's really warming up the complexion. So the doll is getting quite pale from all the flesh of weight layers we were doing. And this is gonna warm her back up. And I am gonna go and add this back into the creases, um, which is gonna look pretty nice actually because this is similar to the color that we're ultimately gonna use to paint the creases. So this is gonna begin to build out that creases color for us. Now, sometimes, say the baby is uh, bawling a fist or, you know, they're making some kind of gesture where the hands or the feet are being clenched. And as you know, when you clench, you're pushing the blood out of that area so it looks more pale. So this is something that you can capture when you're doing your general blush layer. So if the baby is clenching in anywhere, any place, or if the skin is being folded, 
you can simply avoid adding your blush to that layer to create that pale, clenched look. Okay, so I'm gonna go back and get it out of the creases. I gotta make sure I have a clean, dry brush so I'm not adding color as I do that. But as you can see, what little accumulated in the creases and the stuff is really sticking, so <laughs> I gotta put it where I want it so it doesn't seem to wanna come back off. But it's beginning to give us that nice creasing color. So that's something we'll also be building in layers. I, I usually do it concurrently with the blushing or I'll alternate back and forth. Because in my mind, they are pretty similar steps. Okay, so that is our generalized blush layer. Um, just for comparison, here's the limb that we didn't blush. So you can see how pale this one looks compared to the one that we blushed. So we're gonna let that dry. We're going to replicate it on all the other body parts and then cook it in the oven at 250 Fahrenheit. That's 60% power on the new wave oven or power setting six for eight to nine minutes. Okay, as always, if you have any questions, um, please feel free to drop them in the comments or on the blog. Um, I, I know there's some questions out there I haven't gotten to yet, so th thank you for your patience. I, I will be getting back to you soon. And of course, if you're a reborn artist and you see a question out there that you know the answer to and I haven't gotten to it yet, please feel free to chime in. Um, we're creating a community here and I'd love to hear from, from everyone. So again, thank you for reborning with me. We'll see you next time.